Hey everyone, in this video we will be recovering files by using a program named Photorec. But before I get started, let me quickly mention a thing. A while back I made another file recovery video by using a program named TestDisk. It is still relevant, but I skipped over some basics in that video. And naturally you guys have some questions about it. So in this video I will be explaining the basics of data recovery, the differences between the test disk and the photo rack, and finally how to use photo rack on both Mac and Windows. So hit the like button and let's get started. Now first things first, let's open up our trusty paint and try to understand what we will be doing. So let me just quickly draw a box, which represents our non-volatile memory which is the type of storage on our computers that won't lose its contents after we power it off. They can be things like thumb drives, hard disks, SSDs and so on. But they cannot be things like RAM for instance, it is volatile. Anyway, let me draw a few boxes inside our drive, and those ones will represent our files. Like the first box can be an image, the second one can be a text file, and so on and so forth, you get the idea. Now, let's say that I want to delete my image, so I drag my image into trash and it is gone from our drive. But it is really deleted? Well yes, but actually no. So let's empty our red box to mark it as deleted and try to understand what really happens. Now, whenever we delete a file, we basically tell computer that the occupied space from our deleted file is now available to use which means that another file can be written on top of our deleted file. So until that happens, our files still exist on our drives. Therefore, I can recover it by using recovery programs. In our example, as you can see, I can still recover my file. However, if I write another file on top of that, blue in this case, my red file is gone for good. In some cases, it can still be recoverable, but it is extremely difficult process. So, key takeaway here is that when you accidentally delete something, don't panic and write something to the disk. It may make recovery impossible. Also, if you truly want to nuke the disk and wipe the information, you can use processes like write zero or random data filling on disk sectors or blocks. But anyway, now let's look at the main difference between test disk and photo rack. In our example, let's add storage sections which are called sectors in hard drives and blocks in solid state drives. They are basically small regions that contain our files. For convenience, let's give each of them a number. You will understand why we did that in a second. But now, let's understand how we can actually use our files. So, whenever we access a file, we did that through a something called file system. You may have heard things like NTFS, XFAT or FAT32 before. They are all different types of file systems and their whole purpose is to control the data flow from users to hardware. It is obviously a very complicated topic but we leave it at that. However, in our example we can assume that the file system does the matching between our files and their stored locations. Like our image is stored on the first block, our text is stored on the third block and so on. Think of it as an index page of a book. Now, when we use test disk, it basically looks up to that schema and figures out the file locations and recover them from there. Just like opening up the index page of a book and checking the chapters. This is really great for the scenarios where the file system is still intact. But what if it isn't? If so, test disk won't be able to help us that much. And this is where the photorect comes in. If we keep our book analogy, Photorec basically looks up every page of the book to find something, which can take more time, but it can also recover more files. And that is the basic logic and principle behind data recovery. Now let's recover some files. There as you can see I have an empty flash drive. It is completely wiped out by using the write zero method and formatted in XFAT. In Windows I did that by using the command that you see. But be very careful while using commands like these, because they can cause permanent data losses. But anyway, let's plug our drive in and put a file on it, then delete that file. At that point, we are ready to recover our file. But first, we need to head over to the test disk website, which you can find its link in the description down below. Then we basically download the latest version. After we have done that, we just extract it into our desired location. For now, I will be extracting it into my desktop. 
And once that's done, we open up the extracted folder. There we got many choices. In my previous video I've showed how to use test disk from command line. However, in this one I will be keeping it simple and using Photorect with the user interface. To use it, we scroll down and open up the QPhotorect underscore win. And as you can see, this is the window that we get. There, we first need to select our drive. We can do that by clicking on the drop down menu. There, as you can see, we got a list of all the drives. From there, I see that this is my USB thumb drive and I can verify it by its size, which is 2 gigabytes. So I choose that. Then in the panel below, I choose the whole drive. However, you can choose individual partitions if necessary. After that, I keep the file system type as is and choose the empty folder below that. This folder will store the recovered files once the process was finished. In this example, I've created a new folder called recovered in my desktop and chose that. Once we have done that, I click on the file format and choose reset. This will remove all of the checked file types. Then I will scroll down and choose JPEG because our example image is in JPEG. At that point, you may ask that why we only choose JPEG and not every file type. Well, choosing every file type can certainly be an option as well, however do keep in mind that in file recovery each additional option can add to the recovery time. So choosing the minimal options will be beneficial to reduce the time it takes to recover files. This is especially the case for larger drives. However, if you still want to choose everything, you can click restore and it will do it. But anyway, we now hit OK, then we click on search. And our recovery process has started. Depending on your drive size, drive type and your chosen file types, it may take hours to finish it. And this is the reason why I go with a smaller 2GB flash drive in this example. It takes around 2 minutes to finish the recovery and once that's done, I will be back. As you can see, our recovery was finished and we recover a single file, which should be our test image. Now let's close the folder rack and head over to our recovery folder. There it created a folder and once we go inside that folder, there we go. Our image is now successfully recovered, which is great. However, what if we are using Mac? Well, unfortunately we don't have a graphical user interface for Mac, but we can still use folder rack from our terminal. So let's look at that. I've set up the USB drive as same as the previous one. Formatted it to the XFAT, put an image file to it, and delete the file. Now let's recover it. The first steps are actually the identical to the Windows. We head over to the website, download the program, and extract it. Then we open up our extracted folder. There we find the photo rack and right click on it. While the right click menu has opened, we press Alt. When I do that, as you can see, some items change. If we focus on copy, it changes to the path name. So we hit that and copy the path. Then we open up our terminal. I'm currently using ZSH as my terminal, so yours will probably look different. But don't worry about it, the process is exactly the same. We just paste the path that we just copied earlier. Then we press enter. And as soon as we've done that, we type our password and there we go. Now the photo rack is running. There we have a list of available drives. And if you've noticed, there are some normal versions and versions that start with the letter R. There are few differences between them, but if you choose the R versions, the recovery will take less time. To find your disk, you can look to the disk sizes. For example, the last one is 2 gigabytes which means that this is my flash drive. So I go over to that by using the down arrow, then hit enter. Now from this menu, we go over to the file options by using the right arrow and hit enter again. There we have a large list of file types that we can try to recover from. If we want to choose all, we hit the S key. And if we want to deselect all, we hit the S again. But keep in mind that if you choose all, then the recovery will take significantly more time. In this example, our test image is formatted in JPEG. So I scroll down to JPEG and hit space to select it. And after that, I hit B key to save the settings. Then we hit enter twice to get the previous menu. We are almost there. 
Now we hit up arrow key to choose the no partition option which scans the whole disk. Next we go over to the search option by hitting the left key and press enter again. There if you are not using the ext file system we choose other. After that in here we need to choose the output directory. In this example let's choose our desktop to keep it simple. So I go over to it then hit right click to choose it. As you can see it, on top of the screen it changes our directory. Now I can confirm my selection by pressing the C key and as soon as I did that the recovery was started. At that point all we do is to wait for it to finish and once it's done we get the recovery completed message so we can quit from our terminal and if we check our desktop as you can see it's created a folder named recap directory one and if we go inside that there we have our recovered files so in the end i hope you've learned the basics of data recovery and recovery of your lost files by using photorec if you find this video helpful please hit the like button and subscribe I really appreciate that. And as always, if you have any questions, suggestions or ideas, leave them in the comments down below. See you next time. Take care.